This is KGW News at 5. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. First at five, the presidential election remains undecided tonight, with President Trump falsely declaring victory early this morning. Right now, a number of states have not been called, and neither candidate has enough electoral votes yet to win. Let's take a look at where things stand right now. In the last few hours, the AP has called both Michigan and Wisconsin for Joe Biden, putting him close to the 270 electoral votes needed to win. But Nevada, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia remain with votes still being counted in those states. President Trump's campaign filed a lawsuit to try to stop the count in Michigan and Georgia, and they're also calling for a recount of Wisconsin. Biden, on the other hand, is urging patience as all the votes get counted. We wanted to hear how Oregon supporters of President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are doing tonight. To get reaction from those who voted for the president, we went to Newburgh in Yamhill County. It went red again this year. The president won a little more than 50% of the vote there, a few points more than he won by in 2016. We asked President Trump supporters how they feel knowing the president is fighting in court to stop some states from counting ballots. Well, actually, that's a good thing uh, because we do have a court system. Uh, and the nice thing about having a court system is uh, we have the freedom to, when we don't agree with something, let's go ahead and take a look, look a little deeper and uh, let's let a judge or a jury decide. Well, they've known that this was coming. They, it comes every four years on the same date. So you need to be prepared and be ready. And if you weren't ready, that's not the rest of the nation's fault. We also asked Donald Trump supporters in Newburgh if they trust the results, even when experts say there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Multiple people told us, no, they don't trust the results. In downtown Portland, where Democrats far outnumber Republicans, Joe Biden supporters are cautiously optimistic and understand final results will take time. You know, I just need to calm down and, and just breathe and just wait and it isn't over till the fat lady sings and the fat lady hasn't sung yet don't give up yeah we we need this it's a wait and see and let it go because i have no control over all that biden easily won in oregon marking the ninth consecutive presidential election in which oregon voters picked a democrat but nationally the presidential election hinges on just a few swing states Joe Biden's supporters in Portland are watching closely, but realize any decision, as we heard that one woman say, is out of their hands. Joe Biden performed better in Oregon than Hillary Clinton did in 2016, adding about seven points to his margin of victory. He also picked up two counties that Clinton lost in 2016, Deschutes County and Marion County. The map on the left is 2016 and the right is this year. You can see Biden's support is still mostly concentrated in the urban parts of the state. A lot of red there, but he improved on Clinton's results in central Oregon and in the Willamette Valley. Let's look at some local election results, starting with the Portland mayoral race. Mayor Ted Wheeler won re-election last night by nearly 20,000 votes, defeating challenger Sarah Iannarone. But there was also a sizable number of write-in ballots. Wheeler said today he'll continue to work to get people who are homeless off the city streets and into shelters, and that he's looking forward to working with the new council members. Here's Pat Doris. Mayor Ted Wheeler endured withering criticism from local activists and from President Trump over his handling of protests this summer in Portland. But in the end, he proved able to bounce back and beat his opponent, urban policy consultant and self-described Antifa member Sarah Iannarone. With all of the issues that we're currently facing, I think the public said they supported me, they had confidence in my leadership, they had confidence in my experience, and they want a mayor to stick around for a second term and see this hard work through. Iannarone was not available for a comment before our deadline. Wheeler won by more than 19,000 votes. And in an unusual development, write-in candidates gained 45,000 votes. 
Activist Teresa Rayford and conservative Joseph Whitcomb both ran write-in campaigns. When I saw those numbers this morning, like I said, it was astounding. Uh, when I look at the difference between Wheeler and I Anaron, I Anaron, it's uh, like 19,000 votes. I think you probably got the majority of the write-in votes, which was more than 45,000. Do you worry that maybe you cost her the election? I think that people that voted for Ted actually helped Ted win the election. Um, I don't think that anyone that voted for me uh, would have actually voted for Sarah Iannarone. I think we have different values. We'll never know exactly how many votes Rayford or Whitcomb or any other write-in got because the elections office only counts the names of write-in ballots if there's a chance the write-in could actually win. Wheeler begins next year with the city's most diverse city council ever. It includes a Latinx woman, Carmen Rubio, African-American Mingus Maps, a gay man, Dan Ryan, and Joanne Hardesty, the first black woman elected to the Portland City Council. Wheeler is the first two-term mayor in Portland in 16 years, and he said he is ready. And I think it's going to be great. I think this is one of, the, starting in January, it's going to be one of the strongest city councils, I believe, that has ever been impaneled in the city of Portland. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. Portland voters also said yes to the city creating a new police oversight board. It would be independent and community based. The board will investigate complaints and will be able to discipline Portland police officers. This comes after the months of anti-police protests we've seen in Portland this year. Now to some statewide measures. Oregon voters passed two involving drug use. One, decriminalizing certain drugs in small quantities. The other allows the use of psilocybin or magic mushrooms for mental health treatment. They are very different measures with one thing in common. They are first in the nation. Here's Tim Gordon. Measure 109 regulates a promising approach for depression and anxiety. It's a good day for supporters of Measure 109, the psilocybin therapy measure, and Measure 110, the drug decriminalization and addiction treatment measure. Both passed easily and made national news. This New York Times article has Oregon in the headline. It's all eyes on Oregon for the coming months and years as we roll this program out. I Sam Chapman Oregon. says people from across the state voted for the mushroom measure because they understood it's about a highly focused and supervised treatment for anxiety and depression. We're incredibly thrilled and humbled that Oregon made history last night by establishing the first ever psilocybin therapy program in the country. As for the Measure 110 victory. Reaction is one of huge gratitude um, and a bit more emotional than, than I anticipated. Janie Gullickson is executive director of the Mental Health and Addiction Association of Oregon, who understands addiction and recovery firsthand. She supported the measure because it means many drug users will get treatment and not jail time. By removing criminal penalties for low-level drug possession charges and creating a lot more treatment help instead. If you look at the county-by-county county breakdown, while it didn't win everywhere, it did get statewide support. In small-town Oregon, rural Oregon, frontier Oregon, people are still impacted greatly by addiction, whether it's themselves, family members, friends, coworkers, or looking around at their, you know, neighbors and community. Others who led the Measure 110 crusade say it's a more compassionate and effective way to help people. And I think that starts here in Oregon, but Oregon can show uh, the rest of the uh, nation that we can, uh, we can lead by example and end harmful policies and uh, implement better ones. Measure 110 decriminalizes those drug offenses starting February 1st, and they say they've done a lot of the groundwork to get more treatment available later on next year. The psilocybin therapy is going to go a little bit more slowly. There is a two-year rules-making period to develop that program. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Let's look at some races in Washington now, starting with a controversial statewide measure on sex education. Voters approved Referendum 90 with 60% of the vote. This requires public schools to teach sex ed. It starts next school year for students in grades 6 through 12. The year after that, all grades will get age-appropriate sex ed instruction. The Washington legislature passed this into law earlier this year, but opponents got enough signatures to put it on the ballot for a vote. Washington Governor Jay Inslee won a third term. He defeated Republican challenger Lauren Kolb with 59% of the vote. This will make Inslee the state's first governor to get a third term in more than 40 years. 
Here's a race we are still watching right now. Congresswoman Jamie Herrera Butler is winning the race for the third congressional district in southwest Washington with 50 percent, 54 percent of the vote. But her challenger, Democrat Carolyn Long, says she's still waiting for all the votes to be counted. In Washington, mail-in ballots can be received late as long as they're postmarked by Election Day. The AP, which we follow for our calls, has not called this race, but NBC News has called it for Herrera Butler. Let's turn to the coronavirus pandemic now. Oregon reported another 597 new cases today. And you can see on this graph that continues the spike in cases that we're seeing right now. For the past week, we've seen daily case numbers above 400 or 500 every day. Cases have been rising since mid-September. The Oregon Health Authority also reported four additional deaths today. That raises Oregon's death toll to 705.